Why do I dislike these things so much? Stay tuned and I'll show you why. Well, here's one of the reasons. Storage. Storage on my charter boat. Look, line, reel, sticking out. Reel, conventional level line, star drag, with a cover on it? Say it ain't so. Look at obtrusive. Guides, guide, sticking out all over the place. Storage, one of the reasons why I can't stand these things. Unless you have a long butt like this ugly stick striper rod with a spinner on it. If it's got a short butt, look what happens. It's going to come down and hit. Look how close that is to hitting right there. Yep. It doesn't matter which one. This one's actually the best. Most clearance. But then look at the dumb handle. Have you ever seen the covers for a spinning reel? It looks like an Omar the Tent, okay? Maker had to make your dang cover for a spinner. It is the most stupid, idiotic thing I've seen when it comes to fishing tackle. Oh, but look at how nice, compact, and easy this cover is. I do covers. It saves me in maintenance costs. It saves me in time. It saves me in UV protection. It saves my tackle from being covered in salt. But no, I can see salt water all over this reel. The reason I don't have covers on them, because I just don't care about them as much. Now we're lucky that Ugly Stick got their act together. And when they built the striper rod in the spinner version, and the casting version, they put gimbals on the butt. But normally, do you know how big of a spinning rod that you'd have to have to get a dang gimbal on the butt that will keep that rod straight up and down in a rod holder? And what I mean for you bass guys and all them cat fishermen with them other goofy rod holders, what I'm talking about is rod holder locking in. locking in. That's a real rod holder. One of the reasons that I really, really am a bait casting and or conventional reel user is because I'm fishing in current. I don't care where you fish. I'm fishing in current. And when I'm fishing in current and I have got a big sinker on and we're dropping down, you drop down you can feel the bottom. You drop down, feel the bottom. And many times you can keep a reel either on a bait caster, you can push the button and keep the button pushed. Or on a reel like this Shimano Triton, you can drop down, let it go down, and you can thumb it and thumb it and thumb it and thumb it and thumb it bounce it back bounce it back until it's sitting on the bottom nice behind the boat but the big deal is feeling the bottom i could be with a rod this long right up here to the front grip and i feel the bottom why because my thumb's on it i feel it stop moving you can't do that with a spinner. You can't do it properly. Then you add in people being extreme novice fishermen. There you go. That's another reason. 
Well, the reason you'll never catch me dead using a spinning reel, bottom fishing of any sort with a good size lead is because when customers do this, they never, that just keeps going and going and going. They have no earthly idea when that sinker hit the bottom. Why? Zero feel. Zero feel. There's no thumb. There's no nothing on it. You open that bale and you have zero controlled depth. You can't control it the way you can when you have an educated thumb. Now let's talk about spin. Take a look at that line, folks. Take a look at that line. That's 30 pound braid. And it is spun up. You could spin the yarn. It's all about spin. Now somebody that actually knows what they're doing in the spinning reel world does not do this does not do this, flick it out there, and then just snap that stupid handle back. If you have a clue, you'll always cast and then tighten it up. So why am I even bringing this up about spinning reels versus conventional, say, level winds and or bait casters, which they're not all the same? There is a conventional level wind star drag, conventional lever drag, conventional star drag, non-level wind, and then there's a small bait caster. Don't get them confused. Small bait casters are literally designed to cast. And the reason I even bring this up is because I'll be sitting at the boat ramp and some dude who put in his boat and he's waiting for all the wife and the kids and everybody to pour on down to the boat on a Saturday morning and I'll look over in my boat and see nothing but rows of level wine star drag conventional reels and or bait casters and he'll get out he'll look and he'll say hey I can't believe that you let your customers use those and I go what let my customers use those yeah they're just gonna backlash them every time they cast well, number one, we're not casting. We have current. It goes to show you how much he knows about local fishing. People believe that the spinning reel wasn't developed after a long time, okay? The, the conventional reel, and you can see plenty of them on eBay. The conventional reel was an old knuckle buster, okay? A Shakespeare, plenty of other ones that when you casted back in pre-World War II, when you made a cast, you disengaged the spool and you made a cast, the handle went backwards. Granted, you need to know exactly what you were doing when you casted one of those, especially with the lines that they had back then. Linen line, Dacron, all that didn't cast very well it was thick it was heavy it got saturated with water all kinds of issues when he looks over and says I can't believe that you let your people cast or use these he doesn't even know what he's talking about really when it boils down to it I believe from my research that the spinning reel was basically developed after World War II in and about that area and the reason that they'll practically you know do everything everything with a spinning reel in South Florida is because these companies that built these took them to South Florida and gave them to fishing guides and said look now you don't have to cast for all your customers because you could figure there's a guy in a little skiff with a big wooden pole polling people through the flats looking for bonefish or doing whatever staking off and going a kunk funk, right? And hopefully catch a bonefish or a barracuda or whatever in the shallows of Biscayne Bay. To this day, spinning reels are 100% the mainstay because those companies took them down there 
and said, look. And that's what became like religion. I never saw it that way. I grew up when I was seven years old and had a baitcaster or conventional level wine in my hand. And it brings you to the next point. We're fishing in current, as I just showed. This, flick the lever back and let the line go with your thumb. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. People who are fantastic bait casters and or I can cast this thing a country mile. I can do it. We consider ourselves, I guess you could say, having educated thumbs. It's because when we cast, we can slow the spool down. We know how to not bird's nest, backlash, whatever you want to call it. But that's not the whole thing spinning reels there's so much to fail on a spinning reel also i chose reels that don't have these fin oars have this nice rounded edges here i remember having spinning reels pens with like a big star on top those things were a nightmare because people love to snap that over right and then the line would get all hung on here. And by then, they're all, they're all anxious. They're all ang they're starting to turn that handle, right? This is back in the mono days. And mono would get all wrapped in there. So then by the time, and then you got, you got big snarls in this spool. Then what do you have now with braid? You have wind knots. When all you have to do is not have this line tight on the spool and what I mean is every single time you cast a spinning reel you must lift the rod tip and you manually flip this over and if you see a big what we'd call in the pulling fiber optic cable business you'd see an asshole sticking off of your spool that is a loop and then the next time, if you don't see that, and you go and you cast, a gob of line goes shooting through your guides, and it is a fishing guides nightmare, okay? As you can see, <laughs> we were out the other day in 15 to 20 knot winds, throwing a little 3 8 knocker rig and a little one knot mustad hook, and that is the reason why this line is spun to living hell and back. It's literally twisted like crazy because they're throwing this in the wind and it is going, it's helicoptering and spinning and spinning and spinning and spinning. And then they turn the handle and it spins it again. The only time I will even attempt to use spinning gear is when we are trying to cast something small and these people this is all they can do this is not the end of the world it is to some people they call them open faces and oh my god the names and the incorrect verbiage right but as like fly fishermen fly fishermen tout themselves and i'm not this way but they tout themselves as this little elitist fishing group most of the time. We all know that as fishermen. I don't use bait. I use my hand-tied flies. I don't buy door-bought flies. I tie my own. And then I use the lightest tippet, and I use this, and I use that. It's because fly fishing, part of fly fishing, is the ability to be the master of your domain and that means the tackle if you <coughs> can't pick this up and cast it 20 yards with an educated thumb then you need to learn because of the fact that as a bait caster i take pride in the fact that it can be a dark room I can cast this without backlashing. It's pride in the in the tackle handling part of fishing. 
just like the fly fishermen. They're all into this, you know, handling the tackle, mending the line, back casting, side casting, flipping it out, roll casting. All that stuff is part of handling the tackle. Imagine Jack Nichols or Tiger Woods or any one of these super golfers going out, right? And instead of having well-designed clubs to do a job properly, they show up with a bag full of baseball bats. For them, their skill level is so through the roof, yeah, they could probably go golfing with baseball bats. But you can't as a beginning fisherman. You need to learn. And the funny thing is, as people always say to me on my charter boat, oh, I'm not, I, I'm not good at one, I can't cast that. Oh, every time I did it. Because you know why? Number one, you weren't taught properly. Nobody took the time. Nobody showed you. And most of the time, on a four to six hour charter, I don't have time either. It's gonna be, you better learn quick. So no, we're not sitting around throwing a 3 8 ounce jig and a knocker rig with this. But many times we have a one ounce egg on here, okay? And we're just flipping it behind the boat, letting it run with the current, feel the bottom, click the handle up, boom, you're fishing. Okay, so I cannot believe when people walk up to me and they go, I can't believe you let your customers use those. So it's pride. What always pissed me off is how the fly fishermen even have the Federation of Florida fly fishermen and fly, Federation of, you know, uh, fly fishing guides and all this bull crap. Orvis endorsed. Well, you know what? I have casting reels. I use those Daiwa Ayogas. I use these a lot. And how come there is no federation of bait casting aficionado guides? People just take that for granted because you know why? We're not as stuck up as they are. That's what it's all about. But still, I take pride in the fact that that went to Harvard and that went to Yale. Okay, these are Ivy League educated thumbs. If you've been feeling that spool since you were seven years old, I have no problem. But my customers on my boat is all I care about. And number two, they're only going to use spinning reels when it really calls for it. Because we're fishing in current and we're dropping back. And that thumb, they're going to learn that that thumb is going to be like a blind man reading braille. They're going to learn how that thumb is an integral part of the equation of bait casting level line, star drag, conventional reels, or whatever. Plus, at the same time, if you're using really light drag, you always can just stick your thumb there. Real easy. For the average person that you take that fishes once a year, and the drag is light on here, and it's peeling out, most good spinning reel people are going to kind of cup the spool and just put a little finger on there like that. Okay, that sometimes gets to be a little too technical for some people because if you didn't go over it uh, uh, prior, how to maybe add a little drag, you know, to the spool, you know, that's that's a that's a bad place for your hand, right? You're holding the rod, you got to go here, and then all of a sudden, here's the handle. Things get a little complicated. I've been doing this a long, long time, I've figured it out. And I got four of these egg beaters, and they're only for customers. So thanks for watching. I just wanted to explain this, the hows and the whys of why I do what I do and the tackle that I use. So thanks for watching. Leave your comments below. Give it a thumbs up if you hated it. I'm sure you will.